Hello students, welcome to class PM. In today's class, we are going to discuss about electronic spectroscopy. So, electronic spectroscopy deals with electron transition from the ground state to excited state when it absorbs a particular wavelength of or frequency of a radiation. So, this is a major thing happens in the electronic spectroscopy. Whenever a molecule undergoes or absorbs energy, what happens? In that molecule, the electrons in the ground state, they are excited to the another higher energy level state. So that what happens? They become so unstable. So immediately by losing that energy, they will come back to their normal state. This is a phenomena we already discussed. Now, in this electronic spectroscopy, we are going to study about how this electron transition influence by analyzing the characteristics of different chemical substances. So, the energy absorbed, the energy will be found in the range of 200 to 800 nanometer. So, the energy absorbed in this process during the electron transition of a molecule from the ground state to excited state generally found in the range of 200 to 800 nanometer. So, the, if you see this, this range belongs to UV and visible spectrum. So, UV among that UV is comes under 100 to 400 nanometer UV and the visible comes from 400 to 800 nanometer that is a range of visible spectrum. So, even though UV from 100 to 400 but, but for all normal practices we will consider from 200 to 800 nanometers. So, the absorbed energy in this electronic spectroscopy is comes under UV and visible range. This spectroscopy is also called UV visible spectroscopy. It is also called UV visible spectroscopy. So, this is the basics for the electronic spectroscopy. What is electronic spectroscopy? Whenever a molecule absorbs energy, the electrons in the ground state will go to the excited state by absorbing that energy. Here, this absorbing energy is in the range of 200 to 800 nanometers, which is the range of UV and visible spectrum. So, that this is called UV visible spectrum also. Okay. Now, we will see what are the different type of transactions occur in the UV visible spectroscopy or electronic spectroscopy. So, in the UV visible spectroscopy or electronic spectroscopy, there are three type of transitions occurs. Okay. What are those three types we will see now? Three types of transitions occurs generally. The first one, transition involving sigma pi and n electrons. So, what does it mean transition involving sigma pi and n electrons? If transition occurs from the ground state to excited state in which in that transaction if sigma electrons are participating means the electrons are which form sigma bond the electrons which are responsible for the pi bond formation the electrons which are not involved in the bond formation that is non bonding electrons n n represents non bonding electrons so if there is a transition of electrons that are involved in sigma bond formation, pi bond formation or not involved in the bond formation, then that type of transition is called in the first category. And the second type of transition, the transition involving charge transfer electrons, charge transfer electrons, the transition involving charge transfer electron. What is this charge transfers? We will see detailly later. The next one is transition involving D and F electrons. D and F electrons. So, D electron means the electrons present in the D orbitals and electrons present in the F orbital. If the transition in the D electrons and F electrons Okay, that type uh, falls under third category. So, there are three type of electron transition can be seen in the electronic spectroscopy that is transition involving sigma, pi and n electrons that is non bonding electrons and transition involving charge transfer electrons and the transition involving D and F electrons. So, first we will see transition involving sigma, pi and n electrons. So, transition involving sigma, pi and n electrons. N means non-bonding electrons. So, before we are going to study about 
the transitions in the sigma and pi electrons let's study about molecular orbital theory briefly okay molecular orbital theory if you understand uh, you are thoroughly with molecular orbital theory then you can easily understand this kind of transition let's briefly study about molecular orbital theory so what molecular orbital theory says whenever two atoms okay whenever two or more atoms combine by bond formation by overlapping of their atomic orbitals a compound or a molecule is formed okay in this molecules the electrons do not belongs to any particular atom they belongs to the molecule as a whole okay once again i am repeating when a bond is formed by overlapping of atomic orbitals between two or more atoms okay those electrons present in the atomic orbitals do not belongs to any particular atom they belongs to as a molecule whole as a molecule whole molecule that belongs to okay this is explained in the molecular orbital theory when two or more atomic orbitals atomic orbitals like we have 1s orbital 2s orbital 2p 3p 3d such orbitals we have atomic orbitals while forming a bond they overlap with each other for example 1s orbital 1s orbital will be overlap or 2p orbital and 2p orbital will be overlap same way 3d and 3d orbitals are overlap so this overlapping occurs only between energy having same orbitals which are having energy same like 1s orbital 1s orbital will overlap and 2s 2s will overlap so while forming the molecular orbitals only orbitals which are having same energy will overlap now molecular orbital is formed so when two atomic orbitals are overlapping which are having same energy when atomic orbitals with same energy are overlap molecular orbitals will be formed molecular orbitals will be formed but two types of molecular orbitals are formed so in that one type of molecular orbitals called bonding molecular orbitals and other one is anti bonding molecular orbitals when atomic orbitals of same energy overlap with each other molecular orbitals are formed in the two types of molecular orbitals found one of them are called bonding molecular orbitals other one is called anti bonding molecular orbitals what is the difference between bonding molecular orbitals anti bonding molecular orbitals for example let's take one s orbital of one atom one s orbital of another atom is overlapping one s orbital of one atom one s orbital of one atom is overlapping so two molecular orbitals will be formed when two atomic orbitals are combining two molecular orbitals will be formed in these two molecular orbitals one molecular orbital is called bonding molecular orbital another molecular orbital is called anti molecular orbital so in the formed molecular orbitals 50% of them are bonding molecular orbitals another 50% of the uh, molecular orbitals are called anti bonding so on what criteria we are calling them are bonding anti bonding okay for example the energy of one is let's take for example 50 units this is 50 units okay if the formed molecular orbitals energy is less than these two combined okay so they are called bonding molecular orbitals the molecular orbitals whose energy is less than combined energy of atomic orbitals which are forming molecular orbitals is called bonding molecular orbitals whose energy is greater than this combined atomic orbitals those are called anti bonding molecular orbitals okay that's why here these are called sigma these are called sigma star anti bonding this is called pi this is called pi star okay when sigma electrons are participating two kind of orbitals will be formed sigma orbital sigma star sigma star is anti bonding so if you see their energy levels sigma 1s will come first which is having least energy next sigma star 1s next comes sigma 2s next comes sigma star 2s next comes pi 2p x which is equal to pi 2p y which are having 
less energy than phi star 2 p x and phi star 2 p y which is having less than sigma 2 p sigma star 2 p z. So, these are the some examples you can see that ok. When 1s orbital, 1s orbital is combining, two orbitals are forming, half of them are bonding orbitals, half of them are anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Bonding molecular orbital is sigma 1s, anti-bonding molecular orbital is sigma star 1s. Bonding molecular orbital 1s is having less energy and anti-bonding 1s molecular orbital having more energy. Same way in the case sigma 2s, sigma star 2s. But when it comes to the pi orbital, there are three pi orbitals in that this is 2pz orbital is considered which is having a internuclear overlapping. 2pz overlap occurs to the internuclear axis. That is why it is called sigma 2pz. But this is having lateral overlapping that is why it is called pi 2 p x pi 2 p y both energies are same. So, sigma 2 p z is having less than this one next comes the pi star and the highest energy is given to the 2 p z orbital. So, these are the molecular orbitals once again I will summarize the molecular orbital theory what it says when atomic orbitals of same energy combine they will form 50 percent orbitals with less energy than combined atomic orbital which are called bonding molecular orbitals another 50 percent of them are having greater energy than combined atomic orbitals energy which are called anti-bonding molecular orbitals ok. Now these are the energy levels you can remember these energy levels now we are going to discuss about in the next class we will discuss the electron transitions of sigma pi and n electron sigma electrons pi electrons and non-bonding electrons we will discuss in the next class.